Constraining what you do in your law practice and when you do it is a powerful tool to calm the overwhelm you may be feeling and accelerate progress towards your goals. And today I am sharing with you how to apply constraint consistently in your practice so you can achieve your goals faster. Whether your goal is to grow your practice or to make it feel more organized so you can thrive, listen in to learn about the power of constraint. Hello, my friend. Today's episode is a must for anyone who has goals. Constraint is the number one tool I used to begin growing my business faster. And it's what's helped me achieve my goals faster with more ease in every single area I apply it to. So we are going to cover what exactly constraint is in terms of achieving goals, the power of constraint and the impact it will have on you achieving your goals, why it just does not come naturally, and how to think about your priorities so that you know what needs to be constrained so you can achieve those goals. Before I dive in, I want to share something that will help you get the most out of Be A Better Lawyer podcast. As you already know, there are about 300 episodes of amazing content here, and I wanted to make it easier for you to access the episodes that are most relevant to you. So I've created the Be A Better Lawyer podcast treasure map. Inside this guide, I've separated episodes by topics, including money mindset, law firm growth, time management, and so much more. Plus, I've included links to each of the episodes, so you will be taken straight to the website page to listen to each of them. You can download this guide in the show notes or at dinacataldo.com forward slash map. That's dinacataldo.com forward slash map. This guide will make your life so much easier and save you a lot of time because you can get a high level view of all the episodes and pick and choose the ones you think will benefit you the most. Download it at dinacataldo.com forward slash map. All right, let's dive into today's episode and talk about constraint. What is constraint? Well, constraint in the context of Achieving goals requires limiting how we use our resources, our resources of time, energy, and money. When I applied what I'm sharing with you to growing my business, it made me see just how I was hurting myself by spreading my resources too thin and not constraining. If you're familiar with how to create a habit, you already know that trying to implement 10 different habits at once taxes your resources, making it harder to make progress on any one goal. And that's because of two reasons. One is creating a new habit requires energy. And if we're spreading ourselves thin, we have a harder time creating new habits and we're more likely to give up on it because we just don't have the energy to do it. Second, to create a new habit, we must break an old habit. We already have a habit that's been practiced over and over again. And in order to create a new habit, we need to focus our attention and energy on creating a new habit. For instance, if you want to work out each morning, you need to pay attention to the little things that are going to help make that habit easier to implement, like going to bed earlier, laying out clothes, learning how to catch your brain, trying to sabotage your new habit, and implement the technique of talking to yourself and telling yourself how you're going to work out each morning. There's a lot of little things that can go into creating a habit. So it requires constraint. It requires constraint because it requires energy. And once we've created that habit, then we can implement another and another and so on. But if you constrain and focus your attention on implementing one habit at a time, you're going to have much better success at implementing any habit that you want. And when you think about constraint in terms of achieving your goals, it works in much the same way. You are focusing your attention on certain priorities that you decide in your practice and you use your resources just for those specific priorities. You say yes only to those priorities and you say no to everything else. This doesn't come naturally to most of us and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But first what I want to do is give you an example of constraint at work. 
Kobe Bryant is one of my favorite examples when it comes to mindset, because there is just so much information out there about his coaching, his mindset around growth as a top performer. And I had an opportunity when he was a player to really observe the growth he had made over the years from being a young player to a seasoned player. Kobe Bryant constrained his way to becoming a top performer. He did this in a couple of ways. One, when he was focused on becoming a great basketball player, he focused almost exclusively on basketball. He had other interests, but his focus was on becoming the greatest player who ever lived. The beautiful part about constraint is you don't need to do what Kobe Bryant did and take out everything else in your life, okay? You don't even need to be the best lawyer or want to be the best lawyer alive for this concept to work, okay? So stay with me. It works for anyone when you apply what I'm giving you here. He was absolutely horrible at basketball when he first started. He shared that he went to summer camp and he could not score a single point when he was a teenager. And then he began focusing on the foundations of basketball. He was practicing two hours a day and probably more than that. I, mean, I know he used that as an example, but he could run circles around those other kids on the court within two years. And that's another factor I want you to hear. Constraint plus time equals success. You must be patient with yourself. But honestly, when I applied constraint, I saw a difference in myself and how I felt immediately. But I also saw a difference in how my practice grew within 90 days. Like I had really been struggling. You know, this was true in the first business that I had because I was doing all of the things. I was really like trying to push and push and grind and grind. And I took what I had learned as a lawyer, took it into my first business, and then I took it into my early beginnings as a coach, and that was not working for me. And so what I needed to learn was constraint. And once I learned the practice of constraint, everything changed for me. So I want you to know that when you apply this concept, the results you're going to see are exponential. The second way Kobe Bryant constrained was by his practice area. He practiced basketball, period. And I'm a big fan of having multiple interests. So I'm not advocating that you only practice the law. I was a lawyer and I built my business on top of my law practice. And at one point I was even working at a yoga studio just a couple nights a week. I had a coworker at the DA's office who was a lawyer and a kickboxing instructor and a city councilwoman. And you don't have to just pick one thing. But when you choose, choose wisely and manage your resources accordingly. I had a client who was running her own law practice, but on the side, she was also working at a yoga studio one day a week and running a dog sitting business. And because her resources were spread thin, all of her time and her energy, she didn't have the bandwidth to organize her practice and help it grow the way she wanted it to. And when she started saying no to some things, she began seeing how she could use her resources to focus more on creating a practice that felt organized instead of chaotic. So those are two things there, right? Kobe Bryant, looking back at that example, you could see that he focused his intention on the foundational aspects of basketball. He practiced basketball. He did the drills. He did the things he needed to do. In fact, at one point in his career, he was having a difficult time making free throw shots. And so he focused his attention on making free throw shots. And he changed his whole game. He became a much more valuable player because he focused his attention on that. That was constraint. And then he also focused his attention singly on basketball. And so that was what he was doing when he was a player. And when he wasn't a player anymore, when he retired, then he could shift his focus. So just know that this focus is so powerful because it can really exponentially change how you are performing in your practice and help you achieve better results. Constraint is a powerful tool for growth and moving faster towards your goals. And for me, when I first started building a business, I thought I needed to be 
on every social media platform. I needed to be working all of the time. I needed to do a podcast. I needed to do an email every week and that maybe I needed to be doing more of all of the above. And it felt really overwhelming thinking about this. And I always thought that I wasn't doing enough. Surprise, surprise, right? Because when you don't constrain, you have less energy, okay? And the funny thing is, is I couldn't do more because I had less energy, but I wasn't doing really quality work the way I wanted to be doing it because I didn't have more energy. So when you have less energy, your efforts are weaker. When your efforts are weaker, your results are going to be weaker. So when I thought that I needed to be in all places at all times to promote my business, I didn't have focus. That lack of focus was reflected in the quality of the work that I did. So for instance, maybe a social media post wasn't as valuable as it could have been. That's an example of quality versus quantity, right? When something is valuable, people respond to it and they want to share it. When it's not as valuable, it gets ignored. So I want you to think about this in terms of your practice. Let's say you own your own practice and you notice that you're not able to turn in your work on time, you're not doing the quality of work that you want to do, then it's time to really look at, ah, maybe I should be constraining. Maybe there's something where I'm spreading my resources thin and that's why I'm not able to deliver the goods because you want to be able to deliver that top performance for your clients. I know you do. I do too. And so it's really important that we practice constraint because that is what is going to lead to a happy client. And when your clients are happy, they're going to let you know, right? They're either going to rehire you or they're going to refer you to someone or they're going to recommend you to do something or to, to work with somebody. So I want you to just recognize this power of constraint is going to help you in so many different areas, hit your financial goals, but it's also going to help you achieve the goals that you have in terms of having a life. Because I talk to so many lawyers who just want their time back. They just want their life back. And this is what constraint can do for you. Einstein said that literally everything is energy. And that means that everything that we do has an energy behind it. If that energy is unfocused, it's going to shine through no matter what form it takes, whether it's in a hearing, creating social media content, a call with a client, a conversation with a loved one. The other person is going to pick up on that scattered energy. They're going to know you're not fully present. And when I constrained my marketing to just three things, right, basically my communication with people outside of my world, those were just three things, making valuable content with clear offers on Instagram, the podcast, and in my weekly emails, then my business catapulted. And I want to offer that this concept of constraint can be applied to anything, whether it is your marketing, whether it is how you manage your time, whether it's how you increase your income by doing less work. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So because I had more energy and it was cleaner energy, meaning it wasn't anxious or overwhelmed energy, I felt calm. I was able to think more clearly about the content I was creating in every area and that content appealed to more people. And I was also able to address an issue that I didn't realize I had, which was I wasn't making offers and inviting people to book a consult with me, which can be something that sounds so simple, but when you are in that overwhelmed, anxious energy, or you believe you need to be everywhere all at once and you're not constraining, it can be a very easy thing to miss. So another uh, example I want to give you here of how constraint can help you is an example from one of my clients. He wanted to focus on growing his income. And when we began asking some of the questions I'm gonna share with you at the end of this episode, it was clear that we needed to look at how he was spending his time. And those resources are really linked. So I just want you to notice this. If you feel like you're lacking time, oftentimes I'll notice that people also believe that they're lacking money. And that's because they're not constraining and they're not thinking about 
things in a clear way. And that's okay. That's normal. But that is something just to be aware of. Now, first, as we looked at his practice, it was clear that he was not focusing his time in a way that allowed him to grow his income. He spent a lot of it entering billing information and sending out bills when that really needed to be delegated. That's just one example. And that one example took up about 20 hours per month. And he had a 250 an hour billing rate that could have been used billing work, right? Second, he was taking on cases that were unrelated to his main practice area. He cut those out and then he found homes for those cases. Then he got more time so that he could devote his attention to the cases he wanted to take on. That is a prime example of constraint. Third, he was taking on smaller clients that he didn't necessarily want because he was charging so little for them. But then we talked about it and he experimented with raising his rates for those cases and people kept signing up and he decided that he was willing to keep that area of his practice because it contributed to his overall goal of increasing his income. So can you see the impact of constraining to one goal to create a domino effect that makes it more achievable? Because when you have that one goal, you know what to prioritize. Implementing just the first part of what I talked about there would get him $5,000 a month closer to his yearly income goal. And that's $60,000 more over the course of the year, right? So just think about what impact constraint could have on your practice. Another superpower of constraint is that it calms everything down in your life and in your law practice. When you feel more focused and you're focused on what matters most to hit your goals, not only do you accelerate your progress, but you calm your nervous system, you calm the overwhelm, you feel less anxiety. You're not worried about the cases you don't want to take on because they're no longer on your plate. You don't feel overwhelmed because you think you have to do everything because you have made conscious decisions ahead of time about what you do and don't want to do and how you communicate those desires to people. You have more time so that you can do things well. So then you're more proud of your work product and how you're serving your clients. You have more time overall so you can make time to enjoy the things you want to do outside of the law too. But constraint doesn't come naturally to most of us. It definitely didn't for me. As lawyers, I think after about a year of practicing, we go into survival mode, which is brought on by those high levels of stress that we have. We start feeling anxiety. Some of us even become depressed, and it shows up in so many different ways, including snapping at people, not wanting to work, not trusting others to help us, and feeling really guilty about not doing more work. And this is actually a trauma response that you can read about in different neurobiology studies. I'd use trauma with a little T here, but it's still a trauma response. And one of the responses I see is believing that we need to do everything all at once because our brains believe that when we get it all done, then we will have more time and then we will have more money. And when we have more time and money, then we will feel happy and then we will feel more safe. And at least that's how I see a lot of lawyers' brains processing information. And that's how my brain was processing information too. This is a total fallacy. So let's turn to the idea that everything needs to be done, right? This, this, lie that everything needs to be done. A lot of lawyers tell me that every scrap of paper needs to be filed. Every call needs to be returned. Every email needs to be responded to in order for them to feel more safety, to feel more secure, to feel more peace. I hate to tell you this, my friend, but that is never going to happen. If that's what you believe is required to feel calmer in your practice and banish overwhelm, it simply doesn't work. You will answer an email and two more will come in. You will finish a case and two more will land on your desk. There is no such thing as catching up, but there is such a thing as constraint. Constraint helped me calm this trauma response of believing I needed to do everything all at once. 
Another way I think about constraint is a part of prioritizing. That's why I'm always advocating for using a calendar the way I teach in the Busy Lawyer's Ultimate Time Management Guide. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can download it at dinacataldo.com forward slash busy lawyer. Using a calendar requires you to constrain. It requires you to think in terms of priority and managing the resource of time. When I work with lawyers, this is their key to success. They learn how to constrain. They don't even have to learn how to use a calendar perfectly. They just need to begin making decisions about what's most important to them, seeing how they make decisions about what they say yes to and the impact that has on what they say is most important to them. And they begin to make changes. And being able to see it in black and white on a calendar makes them realize exactly what's going on and what needs to change. A lot of lawyers feel stuck when they're moving towards their goals, right? I know I did. And it's not because you're not working hard. You are. It's it's because you're not focusing on the most important things that are going to take you to the next level. You're stuck because you feel like you're in the weeds of your practice instead of looking at the fundamentals that will make it easier to accomplish your goals. And that brings us to possibly the most important part of what I'm sharing with you here, which is how to think about priorities so you can know what needs to be constrained. To constrain requires us to think about what we truly want and then design our lives around creating that. It sounds super simple, but as you probably already know, it's not easy. Most of us never even think about what we want. And those of us who do don't always put our attention on what we want over and over again. We think about it once and that's it. I notice myself being attracted to shiny objects when I'm not paying attention to what I truly want. And that takes my eyes off the ball. It takes my attention away and I need to refocus myself before I spread my resources too thin on chasing all those shiny objects that I'm seeing. I want you to think about a mint plant. And if you you don't know anything about gardening, let me tell you this. Mint plants, they will take over a garden. They're like a weed, basically. You plant it and they spread out super fast if you don't have them in a container. So if you want a mint plant, it's important that you keep it in a pot so it doesn't overtake your whole garden. And then you can watch it. And if you want it to expand, you can replant it into a larger container. So you are constraining growth, basically, to ensure the growth doesn't overtake the way you've laid out your garden intentionally. And then you're consciously allowing the plant to grow if you want by taking it out of that pot and putting it into a larger pot. You want to consciously think about what you're doing in your practice in a way that allows conscious growth or consciously moving towards your goal instead of just random goal achieving, just doing random actions in your practice that you might not even want. And that's what I see a lot of times. So I had a, a lawyer come to me, she had about seven different practice areas and she'd never really thought through what it is she enjoyed doing, what she didn't enjoy doing. And so the practice just kind of kept spreading. She kept saying yes to all these different cases that would come in and, you know, a friend of a friend would ask for this thing and she'd do it and all of these different cases. And so she felt incredibly overwhelmed. And of course she did because she had just like the mint plant, it was like it just spread out, like all of her resources were spread out versus her consciously constraining and really thinking about where she was managing her time, where she was spending her time. So she realized she had kind of created this Frankenstein practice with too many legs and arms, and that really wasn't the life that she wanted. So we just got to work kind of looking at what is it that you want, and I'm going to give you some questions that you can ask yourself so that you can start figuring this out for yourself. And sometimes I'll get like a, I had a lawyer come to me and she felt really spread thin in her position at a firm. And she just realized that the reason she was feeling so stressed out is because she was saying yes to every single project. She was answering every email immediately. She was responding to every call immediately. And she wasn't communicating what she wanted or what she needed to people because she thought she had to keep saying yes. And that 
caused her to spread out her resources. She wasn't able to constrain. And so what she needed to learn and what we worked on was really learning, okay, what is it that you want? And now let's design it. Let's make it so that it works for you. And so when she constrained, when she figured that out, she calmed down the overwhelm tremendously. She started really putting herself in position for promotion because she hadn't in the past. And she wondered why she wasn't getting promoted. And then when we started cleaning things up, she realized like, oh yeah, I wasn't ready for a promotion yet. I needed to clean these things up. And when she did, people started to take notice. And so I want you to just see these actions and these inactions, right, that you take every single day, they're going to take you in a direction. And if you don't do that consciously, if you're not consciously thinking about what you want, how you want to prioritize, what you're constraining, then people aren't going to take notice, all right? They're going to see somebody who maybe is overwhelmed, see someone who's frazzled, and they're not going to take notice of your work product. Even if you have good work product, they're going to see you, that outside layer. And you want them to see the energy that you really want to have, which is that of a top performer, somebody who is a powerful performer, somebody who gets the work done, is calm, collected, cool. And it's really tough to do that when part of your brain says, ah, I want to be a team player. I've got to say yes to everything. But when you do that and you're only getting a couple hours of sleep, you are compromising the rest of your practice. So I want you to just ask yourself, is that how you want to show up? Is that who you want to be? So here's some questions I want to give you that you can begin asking yourself to help you constrain, to find out those things that you want to constrain too. What do I want my practice to look like? That includes asking yourself, when do I want to get to the office? When do I want to go home? When do I want to take breaks? When do I want to work out during the week? What practice areas do I enjoy? How much money do I want to make? Ask yourself all of these questions and write them down. Writing them down allows our brain to get a new focus on them. And it's a really powerful practice to do. Next, I want you to ask some other questions. These are about potential actions you could take to make that happen. Do I want a calendar? Do I want to delegate more? Do I want to communicate to others my availability? Do I want to say no to people who want to hire me, but I don't want to practice that area of the law? Do I want to focus my attention on promoting my favorite practice area so I can bring more people into that area and close out others? Do I want to raise my rates in certain areas so that I am not necessarily taking on more clients, but I can take fewer clients and still have the income level that I want to have? Now, here's another set of questions I want you to think about. You want to make choices about what actions you want to take to achieve your goal. So remember, for example, I constrained to three channels to market my business and grow it. If you're in the same boat, what three channels do you want to use to market your practice? Or maybe you're feeling stretched thin and you want just more time. So then you want to look at your actions and you want to pick one where you can help yourself do this. So for example, if you feel stretched thin, then where are some opportunities you might have to delegate? And if you decide you want to delegate, you've got to think it through. What do you need to delegate? That might mean focusing on creating standard operating procedures for your assistant, reviewing them with your assistant, setting up weekly meetings with them, and tweaking those SOPs until they work smoothly in your practice. So if you're constraining to one thing at a time in your practice, you're going to see exponential growth. So if you focus your attention on delegating and you really pay attention to what can I give, how can I make it as easy as possible for my assistant or my associate to really take over this work? And then you could focus on the next thing and the next thing. Now, I want to give you one final word on constraint. Constraint is not a one and done concept. The impact of constraint is how it compounds with time. It's essential to watch how you're thinking about your practice and your goals, because if you don't, it's easy to stop constraining and begin spreading your resources thin again. Now, once you feel like you have something in place, you feel really solid, 
then you can move on to the next thing. That's what I did with my marketing. I mastered those three channels in the way I wanted to. And then I made a decision to expand to another channel and then another. So you just feel solid in one area. You get that all cleaned up and then you move to the next one and the next one. It's not always easy to see where you need to prioritize. And even if it is, it's not always easy to implement this. So I can help you with both. The beautiful part about the way I do things in my coaching practice is that I help you implement in a way that works for you. And I think one of the things that I was concerned about before I asked for help and hired my first coach was that my coach might kind of finger wag at me, like if I didn't do something I said I would in a previous call. And I didn't want anyone saying anything to me that made me feel worse than I already did about not following through. But coaching, at least coaching done well, in my opinion, is not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be a collaborative environment where you feel open to telling me exactly what's going on in your practice and in your life. And we work together to figure out how to implement what you want to implement. And I'm not there as a drill sergeant. I'm there to support you each step of the way. And I really believe that being in supportive environments leads to faster and more sustainable growth over time. I see it again and again with my clients and I see it with myself too. And that's what you're gonna get when we work together. You can book a strategy session with me at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. All right, my friend, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. And remember, what you want matters and it's within your power to make it happen.